everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is one of one, but you can call me seven and we're thrown back into this awful situation where we realized very cunningly on Okabe's part, I might add, that uh, Moika lied about the content of her D-mail and actually did something that we we have no idea what she wrote. Uh, but it was so like, chilling is the wrong word, but it was scary to realize, oh my God, oh my God, she lied. And that's why nothing is happening. And now we need to go back in there and confront her. And I imagine she's going to, I don't know, kill us. So let's see what happens. I'm not leaning against the door anymore. Moika could just open it, but she hasn't realized that. She's so fixated on getting her phone back, she'd destroy her own door. In any case, I don't have time to check her mail history. I put the phones into my pockets and move to the side of the door. She about to break through. Uh, about to break through. I carefully grip the doorknob and wait for the interval between bangs. Now, I yank the door open. She go flying out. A coffee table flop. A coffee table flies out and smashes into the walkway railing. Look at it. Oh, hi, Moika. Her screech raises hairs all over my body. She's standing in the entrance like a revenant at the gates of hell. I step back. My knees tremble. But then I remember what I'm here to do. I gather my resolve, enter the room, and close the door behind me. Hey, Moika. Or at least, I try. The door's bent and won't fully close. I give up unlocking it. Hey! Give it back. Moika glares at me, shaking with fury. First, I have to restrain her again. This is a woman who would kill on command, who would break her own door down just to retrieve her phone. It's too dangerous to let her be. I'm stronger. I just need to get her on the ground. There's no time. It's now or never. Crushing my fear, I charge Moika at full speed. Oh my god. The same person who you've watched kill Mighty time and time again, and you're just throwing yourself at her? Our bodies collide. Moika tries to twist away, but I grab her clothes and use my momentum to push her to the floor. Oh, jeez. The back of her head hits the floor. Her resistance weakens. She doesn't know how to break a fall. Some secret agent. Ugh. I quickly straddle her waist. Now she's mine. You're about to get arrested by the police, brother. Give it back. Moika flails her arms and legs wildly. I should have known she wouldn't give up. Her fist strikes my jaw. Fortunately, fortunately, Moika is weak. The blow does little damage. I still need to stop her from struggling. First, her hands. I start with her left. I grab her wrist and pin it to the floor. <laughs> this is a lot for me to be reading and describing. A fist flies towards my face. It pops against my left eye, blanking my vision for a second. She seems to stop struggling for a moment. Her hand claws weakly at the air, but it turns out that she was reaching for my hair. She grabs it hard. I feel several strands tear free of my scalp. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. I get a grip on Moika's face and press her head against the floor. Guys, it, we are just, it's, this is actually like one of the most raw um, depictions of like an actual fight and struggle. Like, it's not, I, I can very vividly picture this as if it were like in an anime or in a movie. I can see it happening and yeah, they're, I mean, they're just describing it, but like, I haven't seen this in a visual novel before where it's just like, yeah, this is happening and you're just gonna read all of it. And I'm like, okay. She tries to bite my finger, so I pull my hand back. I grab the hand that's grabbing my hair and dig my nails into her wrist. <laughs> But she still doesn't let go of my hair. All the while, her feet are pounding against my back. She's also trying to free her left hand. I can't take much more of this. I instinctively headbutt Moika with all my strength. Does she go out? The sickening sound of bone against bone echoes inside my head. The impact makes me dizzy too, but I fight it. Moika goes limp. An opening. Finally, I succeed at pinning down both her hands. Okay. This is an image, huh? This is what's happening right now? Good lord. Um, this is... I need to know what her deal is, right? Why? She can't... I can't... I, I cannot say she can't be a bad guy, but, like... She's got something going on, right? Like, she most certainly does. Something is wrong. Horribly wrong. Her red swollen eyes give her an even more demented look. There's an angry bump on her forehead where I headbutted her. They're both just struggling. That hurts, ow. She spits at me. The lukewarm saliva hits my face. Ugh. I want to wipe it off, but my hands are full. Moika glares at me. There are tears in her eyes, perhaps, from the pain. Kill. Eye contact. Good. We're making progress. Okay? Moika breaks eye contact when I mention it. She stares at my pocket. Also, there we go. 75% of CGs unlocked in the game, so I've seen a lot of it now. The majority of it. She must have caught a glimpse of purple. I'm not giving it back. I smile scornfully. I'm not letting you escape into your own little world again. You don't have that right. Give it back! Come on, oh, wow. Jeez. Moika tries to free her hands. I lean in harder to keep them pinned. My strength and position are superior, so Moika accomplishes nothing. Next, she struggles to free her body. Same result. I clamp my thighs firmly around her hips and hold her down. She occasionally knees me in the back, but I can bear that pain. It's not enough to make me forfeit this position. 
I can keep this up as long as I have to. Who's going to tire out first? Moika, without a doubt. I don't do sports or anything, so I'm not that strong, but I'm on top. I don't need to expend much energy to keep her pinned. Why did you take it? Man, they are struggling. They are really both desperate for this and for very different reasons, I imagine. Yeah, uh-huh. Keep screaming. She can scream and spit all she likes. Nothing will make me give up this position unless a policeman shows up from behind you and hits you over the top of the head. I don't care about your phone issues. I don't care about FB. Moika shakes her head violently. She's just wasting her energy. I maintain position and stare down at Moika. You don't kill her on this world line, and the world lines where you did have already been erased. But I remember. I remember everything you did. Everything that never happened. I'll never forget that you killed Mayuri, and I'll never forgive you. Woo! So there's no escape for you today. <laughs> don't know why I said it like that. We're gonna stay here as long as it takes. Until now, I've always run away from facing Moika, but I can't do that on this world line. I have to know what her D-mail said. So let's be honest with each other, huh? Moika is still struggling. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay, Moika. Oh. Okay. This is looking not good. The more noise she makes, the worse it is. Neighbors must be calling the police. Surely, right? So you can talk without your phone. I'm impressed. Whoa. Oh, okay. This is really intense. I'm a mad scientist. Dissection is my specialty. Oh, there we go. Nice. Nice. This woman's out of control. Does she want another headbutt that badly? A knock sounds from the door. Moika and I both look at the door in surprise. Is Nishida from next door? Is everything okay? Do you need the police? If not, then can you please keep it down? The walls here are pretty thin. Damn, I didn't think about that. I can't have her calling the police. Moika suddenly screams. What now? I need to silence Moika somehow, but I can't use either hand. There's only one way. I suddenly press my lips against Moika's. My loveless kiss shuts her up quite effectively. I lock eyes with her as well, trading glares in silence. This is insane. This is crazy intense. Kids these days. I finally hear the neighbor's footsteps recede. What a relief. Ow, 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 ow. She bit you, yeah. From my mouth and lands on Moika's neck, she bit me. When I feel her on my lip, um, with the tip of my tongue, the taste of blood spreads out from the laceration. Moika breathes wildly. She glares at me with tearful eyes. Moika turns her face away and looks up through the open curtains at the bright full moon outside the window. How much time has passed? It feels like it's already been dozens of hours, but it's still night outside, so it probably hasn't been more than one or two. Moika hasn't said a word since I kissed her. Holy crap, you guys have just been like this? She hasn't tried to escape either. Her expression is blank. She's just staring off to the side. What is she looking at? I follow her gaze, but the only thing there is a half-empty bottle of water. Has she given up? Either way, I can't let my guard down. Maybe it's the stress, but it feels like my body is going numb, and I've been drenched in sweat for a while now. The room has no air conditioning whatsoever. The heat is starting to get to me. I thought I had an overwhelming advantage in this position, but it's harder to maintain than I expected. Not only do I have to keep Moika pinned, I also have to keep a close eye on her so she doesn't try anything. All Moika has to do is lie there. She can rest and try again whenever she's ready. Will this last all night? At this rate, my strength might give out first. Fear mounts. If she escapes, she's going to try to kill me. She must have her gun somewhere, I'm sure. I consider calling Kudisu for help, but I can't use either hand, and I don't even know what time it is. Damn. It's almost like I'm the one trapped. No. Stay positive. You can do this. They really had to use that angle, huh? Okay. Game. Sure. Moika's dependent on her phone. That's her weak point. If I keep her separated from her phone, then sooner or later her will to resist should collapse. It's a matter of whose strength will fail first. Moika? Suddenly, Moika calls my name. What do I have to do? Now she's trying to ask nicely. Does this mean Does this mean she's given up? This is what I was waiting for. Now I move in for the kill. Do you remember sending a D-mail? 
D. A D. What? D mail. An email that you send to the past. You sent one to your own phone. You led me to think it was about a phone model exchange, but you changed the text before you sent it. Her typing speed is lightning fast. It would have been easy for her to type a mere 36 characters while Dado and I were preoccupied with the phone wave. Your D mail changed the past. Don't you remember? Normally, once the past changes, everything until that point is undone. But it should be possible to make Lo uh, Moika remember, just as Ferris and Luca did. I don't know. You do know, you just haven't remembered yet. Remember. Remember? Or else. Or else what? I don't know. This is just a tactic to put pressure on Moika. I have another plan to make her remember. Moika turns away again and bites her lip. Tears start falling from her eyes. I watch, never once taking my eyes off her. Okay, so I accidentally skipped past a bunch of this, but like, this is crazy right here. What he says, it's dry, like a scab, the blood on her neck from his lip. Normally, Moika could be mistaken for an elegant, beautiful woman, but now she has large shadows under her eyes. Her skin is rough, her face is pale. She looks more intoxicated than intoxicating. Her entire body reeks of death. She's clearly insane. This is the real Moika. I wish I'd realized sooner. I really don't know. If I could remember, I would, but I don't remember anything. Moika's gaze shifts constantly from me to the ceiling and then to the window, but her slow murmuring is evidence that she's almost beat. Just a little more and her resistance will end. Fine, I'll change the question. You received a strange email about two weeks ago. It came from your own number and it was dated several days in the future. She remembers. Moika's eyes open wide. Gotcha. You remember? Good. That was the D-mail. What did it say? If I tell you, I'll return your phone. Oh. <laughs> she suddenly curses at me. You won't tell him, huh? Why not? It's my mission. Her mission? I recall what Moika told me on a previous world line. The rounder's mission is to find and acquire IBN 5100s. In that case, the IBN 5100. She fell into my trap. Her reflexive response was all I needed to see. She sent a email to herself telling her where the IBN 5100 was. Has she been using the time leap machine all this time? Whew. Oh boy, this is, this is getting juicy. It was about the IBN 5100. How much do you know? I, I'm asking the questions here, just answer. You can't? You won't betray FB? So you're choosing FB over your phone? How loyal. But Mighty's fate hangs in the balance. I can't give up. Not after you've come this far, brother. Moika still hasn't calmed down. She's been opening and closing her hands for a while now. She's not trying to escape my restraint. She's just twisting her body. Licking her lips, shaking her head, trying to brush the hair off her face. It's like she's su suffering from withdrawal without her phone. Soon, she won't have the mental fortitude to resist. If she won't talk now, then I'll just wait until she will. Is it really that painful to not have your phone? Why are you so dependent on it? I can't talk to people. You're talking right now, aren't you? And when she attacked the lab, she was leading a squad of hardened killers. But Moika shakes her head violently. If I can't use mail, then I'll be cut off from the world. What? Are you fishing for sympathy? You're just afraid of being abandoned by the rounders, aren't you? No, not the rounders. FB. That's the same thing, isn't it? And don't say the world. You're the one who killed an innocent girl. You're the one who erased Mayuri from the world. I didn't kill her. Not on this world line, maybe, but on another world line. You came to steal our time machine. You killed her. You killed Mayuri. On the world line where I interrogated Moika, she told me that Mayuri was expendable. It didn't matter to CERN whether she lived or died. If FB told me to, then yes, I killed her. Who was FB? Where the hell is he? I asked her the same question back then, but another rounder appeared before she could answer. Something tells me she won't have backup this time. Moika's position in the rounders has changed. I can't tell you. Then let me tell you something. Listen good. If you're holding out for backup, you can forget it. Nobody's coming to save you. The pain and despair are just going to get worse, and in four days, you'll kill yourself. Moika seems startled by this. I go in for the kill. 
I came here from the future using the time machine CERN wants so badly. That's how I know. You kill yourself in this room, all alone. Your precious FB doesn't save you. No one does. Not the Rounders, not CERN, and not the Committee of 300. Your boss hasn't replied to your mails, has he? You know why? Because you've been abandoned. <laughs> Moika's face contorts in despair. Once again, tears fall from her eyes. Guilt squeezes my heart. I know that I'm causing this woman pain. Inside of me, a voice whispers that it's nothing compared to what she did to Maiety, that I have no reason to show mercy to a murderer. But at the same time, my conscience screams that it's wrong to hurt someone, no matter who they are or what they've done. Insane mad scientist my ass. I'm afraid to hurt my mortal enemy. I'm nothing but a hypocrite. FB doesn't deserve your loyalty. Tell me everything. I ignore the ache in my heart and push harder. But Moika shakes her head violently. FB wouldn't betray me. FB wouldn't abandon me. Then why do you kill yourself in four days? You kill me and make it look like a suicide. I wouldn't need to cover it up if I killed you. I just undo your death with my time machine. When I got here, you were sitting in the corner like a limp rag, crying about how FB wouldn't answer. Remember? How many days has it been? How often did FB contact you before? And when did it stop? I keep the questions coming, need to pile on the pressure. It used to be every day. But it's already been 10 days. Oh, buddy, you have been, you are expendable. You have been used and cast aside. 10 days with no contact, correct? Moika looks up to me with pleading eyes. I won't betray FB. FB betrayed you. I need to know what FB is. I feel like it's going to surprise me, but like... He threw you away. FB used you, and now your usefulness has ended. FB isn't like that? Then what sort of person was he? She was gentle. There we go. A classic. You think it's a guy? It's a girl. She was gentle to me like a mother. FB. I finally had a place I belonged. Like a mother? FB is a woman? I expected an evil-looking old man like you see in the movies, but I guess I was wrong. I talked to her about my worries. She always replied right away. Like a friend, but gentle, accepting. Guys, who the hell is FB? This is... really perplexing. I don't want to think it's one of our cast of characters. I really, really don't want to believe that. Have you met her? Moika shakes her head weakly. You haven't met? Even though she's like your mother, your friend? Damn. If they had met, then I could have gotten Moika to lead me to her. Rounders must hide their identities from one another. So you've talked, but you've never met. But you must have wanted to meet her, right? Even if it was against the rules? It would ruin everything if she saw the real me. Did she ever say she wanted to meet you? No, never, and I never asked. So no phone calls either, then. Moika turns away, then she nods faintly. Didn't you wonder why? Why would such a kind, gentle woman refuse to meet you in person? Was it really just the rules? And why isn't she returning your emails now? Think about it. She was using you. You were tricked. I don't know anything about, it, uh, about her, but like... What did her last email say before she stopped contacting you? Leave the IBN 5100 at the designated location. Moika, you fool. You let your tongue slip. Two weeks ago, FB told her to leave the IBN 5100 at a drop point. That means she already had it in her possession at, the time, at that time. I recall how Moika kept bombarding me with questions about the IBN 5100. I might have let it slip that I found the computer at Yanabayashi Shrine. After that, she sent her D-mail. The world line changed. The lock was broken on the shrine storehouse door. The IBN 5100 was gone. 
These facts point to one conclusion. She sent herself the location of the IBM 5100. Now that I know, it seems so obvious. If only I hadn't trusted Moika. If only I had seen through her lies. But no. I played right into her hands. I was the tool's tool. I almost burst into self-deriding laughter, but I desperately hold it back and keep a straight face. What was the designated location? The coin locker in front of Daibiru. The place where Luca put it? When it was broken? That place? Hmm? Hmm? Is that what you mean, Moika? The coin locker in front of Daibiru. Wait. Isn't that where Luca hid the IBM 5100 on the previous world line? Is this another effect of convergence? Can I retrieve the IBM 5100 if I go there now? No, I can't expect it to still be there. Remember what happened with Luca. The invisible force of convergence is keeping the IBM 5100 away from me. If I want to get it back, I need to cancel Moika's email. I know the message. I've already reached my goal. <laughs> Look. Yeah, she seems to be brainwashed in some kind of way. Maybe socially engineered or manipulated. The fact doesn't change that she callously killed Maeti over and over and over again. The way that Okabe is going about this isn't necessarily good or right. Sure, he's accomplished his goal. But again, when it, when it comes to emotions and what he's, what he's experienced over and over and over again. Knowing that she's a source of a lot of it. Source, I say. Um, I don't know if I can blame him. I don't know if I can blame her either. I don't know what she's been through. I hope we find out maybe a little something, just a little more. We have to find out who FB is, right? Don't make us connect the dots, I'm not good at that sometimes. Moika starts crying softly. I sigh deeply and lift myself off Moika's body, then I lean back against the wall and stretch my aching limbs. I take Moika's phone out of my pocket. I'm using your phone. Moika slowly gets up. She wipes her tears and fixes her hair and clothes. Her wavy hair obscures her face from this angle so I can't make out her expression. She doesn't react to what I said. Even though I'm no longer restraining her, she doesn't try to attack me and take back her phone. I open Moika's mailbox and search for the D-mail. It takes about three minutes, but I finally find it. Three mails from Moika's own phone, each 12 characters long, sent on August 4th and received on July 31st. The retro PC is at Yanabayashi Shrine, just as I suspected. Moika changed her D-mail in the few seconds I had my back turned. All I need to do now is send the cancellation mail. Okay. Dang, she's still up? Kurisu a homie, for sure. You at the lab? Don't worry me like that. What, were you worried about me? I mean, you set off an obvious death flag. I'm surprised you're still alive. Where are you now? I'm standing by at the lab. Set up the, the, the machine. I'm sending another D-mail. Destination? July 31st, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. on the 31st. While Kurisu calculates the hours, I type the mail. Do not go. Not at shrine. It's a trap. It says do not. Yep, there we go. I address the mail to the phone wave. Okay, all set. All right, activate it. Activated. I press the send button. The mail starts sending. <clears throat> Reading Steiner should activate. This time, for sure. I brace myself for the incoming vertigo. Well? <sighs> why won't <laughs> it change? <laughs> Another mistake? No, there's no way. I know what Moika's message said. This email should have cancelled it. Why isn't it working? What if it has to do with the person who time leapt earlier? <laughs> the person who time leapt. Um, and, uh... Okay, but I couldn't catch them in time to see who it was. What the hell's wrong this time? What did the first email say? That the IBM 5100 is at Yanabayashi Shrine. I tried to cancel it by telling her it's a trap, but it didn't work. I'll try to phrase it differently. Wait, we went through this with the Lot of Six experiment, remember? The Lot of Six experiment. I sent myself the winning numbers, but the past me didn't buy the ticket. Instead, he gave the winning numbers to Luca. The person who reads the email chooses whether or not to act accordingly. Kiryu learned that the IBM 5100 was at the shrine. Though the cancellation mail came right afterward, I guess she ignored it and went anyway. Maybe she didn't believe the cancellation mail, or maybe she was so diligent she decided to check it out even when she when told not to. I glance at Moika. She's still hanging her head, but her tears have run dry. I wonder if she's listening. Damn. Even when told it was too risky to go to the shrine, she went anyway. We need a more persuasive message. Something that will prevent her from going to the shrine. Like what? Something about FB? That's the problem? Is it possible to persuade her with just 36 bytes of text? 
or should we consider other possibilities? What if I send a email to myself on July 30th? Could I beat her to the IBN 5100? Were you even interested in the IBN 5100 then? When did I start caring about the IBN? I can't remember. Fine, that's out. So how do I convince Moika to listen? At that moment, electric shock runs through my brain. Two initials. FB. What? Moika's handler, she's obsessed with FB. If the mail comes from FB, she'll do whatever it says. Do you have FB's phone? No. They haven't even met. We don't know where FB is. Then there's nothing we can do. Give me a little time. Gonna make me wait again? Well, I've been pulling all-nighters recently, so whatever. Just don't do anything stupid, okay? So even after prying answers out of Moika, there's still more work to be done. Fate really seems to love getting in my way. Alright. To break out of this world line, I need FB's identity and location. I call Moika's name. When she finally looks up, I drop her phone into her lap. She accepts it with a confused expression. Looks like we're searching for FB now. Moika grips her phone, but she doesn't look at the screen. I sigh deeply. I need to get as much information on FB out of her as I can. How exactly did you become a rounder? Honestly, I couldn't care less. I hate having to stand here and talk with the woman who killed Maidi. Hugging her phone to her chest, Moika retrieves her glasses and puts them back on. Four years ago, I tried to kill myself. Her voice is a barely audible whisper. For a moment, I'm surprised she's not talking by mail. I had no hope. I wanted to get away from everything. Why? No big reason. Her expression is blank, lifeless, like always. But behind her glasses, her eyes are red from crying. They are the only trace of emotion on her doll-like face. Little things, lots of little things piled up. I've always been like this. And your family? Moika shakes her head a little. She has none, I guess. I don't bother asking whether she ever had parents. It doesn't really matter. I locked myself in my room and overdosed on sleeping pills, but I didn't die. Afterwards, I got a mail. Recruiting rounders, it said. It was sent to hundreds of people, not just me. Isn't that spam? Do the rounders really recruit like that? Nothing mattered anymore, so on a whim, I replied. And then FB contacted me. Ever since, I followed FB's orders. Were you always stationed in Akiba? Moika shakes her head. Until three months ago, I was in Nagoya. Before that, Yokohama. Before that, the rounder's chief duty is to acquire IBN 5100s. I guess they had her traveling all over Japan, digging up info on retro PCs. How many IBN 5100s have you found so far? Not even one. No results? It sounds like CERN is spending a lot of effort for not much return. I sigh deeply once again. So what now? Are you going to sit here wallowing in despair until you kill yourself four days from now? Or do you want to rebel against fate? What a good line. I love those kinds of lines. Rebel? Even as I ask the question, I know that for her, rebellion is impossible. This world line has already approved her death. She's in the same situation as Mighty. No matter what she does, she will die. I know that, and yet I ask the question. FB used you and threw you away. Accept it. And then ask yourself what you're going to do about it. Moika looks down. Even if FB did use me, that was the only place I belonged. That was the first time in my entire life that I was needed. FB gave me purpose. To protect that purpose, to protect FB, I would do anything. You're beyond hope. I stand up. Drowning your dependence for all I care. Your death has already been decided. But I won't let fate have its way. I'm rebelling to the end. No matter what, I will save Mayuri. Just a little bit more. I can't give up now. Oh, man. That was intense as hell. Good lord. Now he's out here in an empty Akiba. There's no sign of anyone near the coin locker. Couldn't fit in any of the regular size lockers. One of the large lockers. Lights on. Bottom locker still in use. Is the IBM 5100 still inside? We've been apart for far too long, my partner, but now only a thin locker door separates us. Is this what love feels like? Yeah, let's not go crazy. Come on, man. Consider the situation calmly. Is it really inside? I want to check right this instant. I can't believe I forgot to ask Moiko which locker she used. Should I get a crowbar or something to pry the locker open? If the IBM 5100 really is inside and I, would, and I steal it, what will happen to the world line? I have yet to cancel all of the emails, which I thought was the only way to restore the original. But now the IBM 5100 is so close. Why can't I just reach out and take it? I know how to cancel Moika's email, so I can always do that if this doesn't work. Let's try it, just to make sure. First, I make a quick visit to the lab. Ignoring the complaints of the lab mems who stayed awake in the lab all night, I retrieve a makeshift crowbar from the development room. 
Then I returned to the lockers and thrust the pointed tip of the crowbar into the crack of the door. Oh. <gasps> Just as I begin to pry, a shrill siren shatters the night. Of a patrol car coming this way, their timing couldn't be worse. The police released me after about 30 minutes of scolding. I returned to the coin locker and tried to pry it open again. Immediately. <laughs> oh my god. This time they take me to the police station. I'm stuck in interrogation room all night getting preached to by policemen. I conclude that this is another effect of a tractor field convergence. No matter what I do, I cannot obtain an IBM 5100 on this world line. This is what fate has declared. I get the police to call my father and they finally release me. I forget that you have parents, man. They didn't go so far as to arrest me, but the policeman, as well as my father, scolded me harshly. I act apologetic, but in actuality, the words fall in deaf ears. Time to go straight back. After my father goes home, I head straight to Moiko's apartment. I tried calling her. I took the opportunity to memorize her phone number yesterday, but she wouldn't pick up at all. Before I get there, I send a mail to Dado asking him to check if the coin locker is still occupied. Ah, oh, jeez. Door is unlocked. I find Moiko hugging her knees in her corner, just like she was when I first found her. You put it in the bottom right locker, correct? How? Out of all the lockers, only three could hold the IBM 200 Out of those three, only the bottom one was in use. Check. The big locker on the lower right is in use. What's this about anyway? Don't make me your errand boy so early in the morning, fool. So he's still got it. Okay. If that's the one you use, then FB hasn't picked it up yet. Do you know what that means? Moika frowns. It means that if we stake out the locker, you'll get to meet FB. <laughs> that occurred to you? Some secret agent you are. I'm headed there now. You coming? What will you do if you meet her? Borrow her phone? That's the best way to prevent Moika from going to Yanabayashi Shrine. I can't meet her. I'm too afraid the real me could never live up to her expectations. Something tells me her expectations were never that high to begin with. Moika's face contorts again. I'm being blunt. Not only because Moika is Maeti's murderer, but also because Moika's weakness is starting to get on my nerves. Just like Dada's mail said, the locker's still occupied when I get there. I look around to make sure there are no patrol cars, no crowbars this time. I don't feel like getting arrested. This is such a bizarre situation, holy hell. I head across the street to Dai Bidu, head behind one of its humongous pillars and begin the stakeout. My legs are getting tired. I was going to borrow Mighty's portable game console, but I decided I didn't need the distraction. Still, it's pretty tough to keep standing like this. I also need to stay inconspicuous. Someone might notice if they see me standing in the same place for hours. I wouldn't want a security guard to give me trouble. I mean, I guess there's not much to worry or there's not much worry about that. I've already been here for seven hours without incident. My legs are growing numb, so I squat and lean against the pillar. Gotta get food. Somebody taps you on the shoulder. FB, I try to leap to my feet, legs get tangled. It's Moika. Moika's standing there looking down at me with those glassy oh eyes. God. What are you doing here? You'll keep watch too? Is that okay? Why the change of heart? I stand up and dust off my clothes. You were comfortable with your male-only relationship, weren't you? I thought you wanted to maintain that distance. So what made you decide to risk a meeting? At this rate, Moika puts her head on her knees. She looks ready to cry. I've seen that expression once before in her moonlit apartment. Yeah, she loses SB. Or SB, FB. To the world, Moika nods faintly. You can't bear to be alone yourself, yet you'd end an innocent girl's life because some person you never met told you to. A cultist, that's what you are. And her cult leader, FB, abused her weakness before throwing her out like old clothes. <sighs> it pisses me off. FB's cruelty. Moika's weakness. I can't decide which I hate more. Then Moika nervously brings out a convenience store bag. What's this? Instead of answering, Moika looks away. I look inside. Milk and bean buns. Exactly what you need on a stakeout. There's enough for two. You brought this for me? Moika nods. Very well, you may join the stakeout. Now we can take turns watching and we'll also look less suspicious to passerby. Holy hell, guys. All right. Night draws on. Still no sign of FB. This is a good place to end it. What a bizarre situation. Wild on all accounts. A crazy bit of, like, development and learning about Moika and then also character development for Okabe. This is insane. Like, uh, that whole situation was just wild as hell. Um, and now they're just staking out together? I really need to know how they're going to wrap up Moika's storyline and who FB is, but we'll find out in the next episode. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I definitely did. And I will see you guys in the next one. So for now, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Bye! Ooh.